Welcome back to Open Line, talking about the proposed gas compressor stations in Nashville. Uh, two people here representing groups that are definitely opposed to that in Southeast Nashville and in Jolton. Um, and and we've, we've had a, a good conversation, a lot going on in the council. I'll talk some more about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But let's say you don't live right in the areas where you all live. You're not in those neighborhoods. Say you live in another part of Davis County or another part of even, you know, a, a, neighbor, a surrounding county. Why should or should, does, does this impact them? If so, how? I think Matt mentioned earlier the fact that uh, the environmental assessment that came out from uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, uh, had a thing that said that the impact radius was 30 miles, 50 kilometers, 31 miles. Uh, and if you take a 31 mile radius around the Jolton compressor station and a 31 mile radius around the one in proposed in Cane Ridge, uh, you look at the overlap, it hits the middle of Nashville head on. That's what's called the cumulative impact radius. And um, as I said, if, if somebody's interested in seeing the map of that, uh, ccsenow.org is our, our web page. And we've got, uh, we've got that as the, the top thing that shows that why it's a Davidson County issue. It's not just, uh, you know, it's not just... So to be successful in fighting this, you were hoping, I guess, to bring in people beyond just the communities in which you live. Oh, absolutely, yes. yeah. Yes. And are you seeing that, or what, what, do, you, what do you think you're um, seeing? It's right hard now? to tell uh, because we don't exactly know who's writing in, but um, we get feedback from local representatives and, and government officials, and they've said that they have heard and gotten hundreds, maybe thousands of emails uh, from people all over the Davidson County area uh, in opposition to both of these compressor stations. Um, but once again, you know. What, what I guess needs to be expressed is that this is a Nashville issue and this does affect people outside of Jolton and outside of Cane Ridge um, because these, these substances go into the air and it gets picked up by the wind and the impact radius is 30 miles and it overlaps again right over downtown Nashville. I mean, this affects the whole city. Yep. This is something everybody should be thinking about. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. go to Luke. Hello, Luke. Luke, are you there? Luke, are you there, Luke? You may have to turn down your TV. Hi. Hi. Go right ahead. All right. My, I, uh, my uh, assessment of this over the uh, last month or so is that it's, so, it's somewhat simple and that the compressor station is located in, in a res surrounded by residential communities as close as 150 uh, yards. Uh, and not only do you have, most importantly, I guess, is 24-7 uh, noise pollution. Mm -hmm. Right. And occasional uh, blow, blowdowns, as they refer to yes. it, where you have air pollution. Uh, you have, yeah, natural gas being sprayed directly into the atmosphere, many tons of it. Pardon? He, he agreed with you. So yeah, what is, what is your what is your conclusion? My conclusion is it's it's located in an area that is detriment, detrimental to the citizens of uh, and, and residents of Davidson County, and then you could put it over the over the the next hill, so to speak, in a less populated area. Okay. All right. Thank you, Luke. And that speaks to what you were saying earlier, yep. that there are other locations. There are other oh, yeah. locations. And um, so this has passed on this latest effort before the Metro Council, which again deals with air quality. It has passed on two readings. There's a, a third reading yet to come. It, it says it passed unanimously. Do you expect it to pass unanimously on the third reading? We hope it passes unanimously on third reading, but there was some definite objection. Uh, it went to two committees before, and one committee recommended it, but it was a recommendation three to two. The other committee tied two two, uh, so that means it has to go back to that committee, and I'm afraid I've forgotten what that committee's name is, but uh, so it has to be referred back to that committee, so that committee will report again. So again, there's going to be uh, work on the committee level to try and convince them to, uh, to urge support of it rather than to tie. Um, and so the third reading is going to be, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of folks in 
yellow and gray shirts out there um, at the next council meeting for the third reading because it, it's probably going to be a contentious thing still. We think that the, the council, th there were a couple of people who were fairly opposed, but then a whole bunch of people spoke up in favor of it, and so we're hopeful that it will pass on third reading, but nothing is certain. There's a lot of pressure coming to them from um, Kinder Morgan, from Columbia Gas Pipeline, and from all of their lobbyists. We get stories all about the, all the time about the lobbyists coming to talk to them, and as I said, we, it, it's a weird feeling when you find out that your representative is talking to these people, and yet they won't talk to the community. They won't come out and do a public hearing. They won't. They won't do anything for us to, to communicate with us. At why least, won't at least they? Why won't they do that? I wonder. I wonder why that is. Do you know? Well, they, they I don't know if companies? they would. I don't know if they would say that. But yeah, yeah they, they declined our invitation. Why? Why? Why, why, why won't? Because if they come out and talk to people, it creates awareness, and. Uh, generally they they operate in a way that allows them to do what they need to do with as little awareness as possible and there are a lot of situations where these have just moved in next door to somebody and these people didn't really know until they were being built um, I don't know why we were so fortunate to find out so far in advance but I think it's a great thing and it gives us now a really they did have a meeting in mm -hmm. your area that they did. so there is I mean we should I guess say that they, they sure yeah they did um, and I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you why. And right. I couldn't tell you why they did and some other companies don't. Um, I think part of the, they, they, they knew that they were going to run into opposition because Kinder yeah. Morgan, Kinder Morgan actually uh, did the bare minimum legally. They did not have a public hearing. FERC does not require a public meeting. It's a, a, a recommendation. Um, they filed all the paperwork at the federal level and then sent letters to people, certified letters to people in the community. And the, there was one person who got a certified letter and it was a very cryptic letter. It said, if you want details about the project, go to the public library. Mm -hmm. And three of the libraries were up in Kentucky, over 100 miles away, and one was the Goodlettsville Public Library. So she made the trip over to the Goodlettsville Public Library and they said, well, we don't have that material, it's checked out. So mm -hmm. then she went back home, got on the phone, finally found somebody who said, oh, we're building a gas compressor station. And that's how she found out about it, and she raised the alarm in the rest of the community. Most people had got the letters and didn't know what it meant. So what has it been like for you? You're, you're in this, I guess, battle. Has, has it been surprising for you, or kind of what, what have you learned? or felt. I've learned a lot about the, how the political process works. A lot of things I never knew uh, uh, about the... Uh, if you want the only... The, the upside is that uh, as a community, uh, Jolton sort of, you know, we're, we're a, a, there's a lot of space between the houses. You don't, often don't meet your neighbors and it's amazing to come together as a community. The, the people up there uh, have really pulled together and uh, there's a lot of people who I never knew before and I know very well now, maybe too well. We, we meet too often to, to work in opposition to this. But it's, uh, you know, as I said, it's a, it's, it's a learning process about how the system works and, as I said, the federal oversight thing was, is kind of a shock to us. Mm -hmm. What do you hope people do? We have about 30 seconds left. What, what are you hoping people do here? Um, the city as a whole, we just need people to contact their local representatives and, uh, and let them know that they want this thing stopped because our government needs to hear from the people. Um, they've told us this. They want to hear from you. They want everyone to write in or uh, basically email them and let them know that they don't want this, these to be built. Um, yeah, that's that's more or less it. Yeah, write to your councilman for this for this third reading. We want a lot of people to to make sure that if you're listening to the program and you feel yes, that you, this this affects the whole of Davidson County. Awareness is key please, and yeah. input is key. Yeah. So, All right, we're gonna yeah. take a break. We'll come back. We're gonna wrap everything up. Take a break, we'll be back right after this.